Hello. Today we're going to talk about values. Um, we mentioned them at the start of the module and we're going to do a couple of tasks that can help you define your values and see how you can embed them into the work that you're doing. Um, so before we start, I want you to make sure that you have a couple of pens and some post-its. If you don't have post-its, you can just cut up other squares of paper that you have that you can write on, as long as you can move them around. Um, I'm using the wall here, but you can use a big bit of paper or just arrange them on the floor. That's totally fine too. Um, so before we start, I want you to think about your own values. And I think some people think that values have to be ethical or moral, but actually they can be things that just make you feel alive, that make you excited, that help you be more productive, as well as moral and ethical things that you hold dear. If you're working within your values, um, it can bring a sense of calm and fulfillment and you're happy with the work that you're doing. Um, and that's why it's important that when you're building your projects, the ones you're working on now or ones in the future, that you align how the project is run and the goals of the project and the values of the project with your own. Now, it will probably be quite impossible to match everything up, but it's good to just assess your values and those of your business and see if there's any areas of conflict and how you're going to work around them. And also, are there any areas or any values that you hold dear, but they aren't demonstrated in your work or there isn't a chance to incorporate them in your work yet that you could change? Um, so some ideas of values might be um, achievement, personal development, respect, um, getting a promotion might be important to you, meaningful work, harmony, getting money, independence, honesty, um, having a good reputation, um, gaining financially, uh, having stability in your life, having self-respect for what you do, um, freedom of time, uh, gaining knowledge. It could be um, about being able to be creative or working in a community. There's you know, probably hundreds of values and I've put some links on the page that you can go and explore what values there are before you start if you want to. Um, but I think most people can quickly come up with a few. So what I want you to do is set a timer um, on your watch or your computer or on the clock on the wall and just for two minutes stop this video and quickly write down as many as you can of the values that you hold dear and then after the two minutes um, start this video again. Welcome back. Um, I hope that you got a lot of values written down. It's not a lot of time, but it's good just to kickstart your brain and you can always add some more later. So on your post-its, I want you to, post-its or a bit of paper, um, have four headings. This one's always important. Things that um, you need no matter what. Um, sometimes important is, actually this is quite important all the time, but there are some situations where you know it's just not possible and that's okay. Rarely important is sometimes this comes up and you think actually yes it is important now but it's just not something day-to-day -day that you need and never important is well self-explanatory things that are never important. And I think when you have reflected on yourself quite a lot it's rare that you'll actually get one for this. I just wrote mine out in my two minutes as well and all of mine really I think fit in these two columns because I know what's important to me but I've added a few examples for here and I think maybe you'll have a few in here this time but if you do it again at the end of the course you'll know already what's not really important for you and you won't write it down. Um, so my values I would say helping others so the majority of the work that I do has been linked to helping others, whether it was when I ran a shop and I would help graduates to sell their work, their creative design work, or in startup, my startup incubator, when I helped small businesses to launch, or in this job, I hope, you know, by the end of it, you'll think that I helped you in some way. Um, so for me, this isn't sometimes important because not all of my jobs have been linked to this. I was a jeweler once and um, sometimes I do consulting things which aren't directly linked, but this is important. 
Um, harmony, I think, is for me kind of here. You know, I'm not a person that really likes a lot of conflict. Uh, I like things to chug along. I think if, um, yeah, there's times when you'll disagree with people and that's fine, but generally I like to keep the peace in a workplace. I think it helps me to focus and to be able to speak to people on a good level and to progress things forward rather than being mired down in lots of disagreements. Recognition, I would say for me, is um, goes here. So I think it's important to for you to understand what it is that drives you. So for some people, it could be money. You know, they want that promotion and they want the money that comes with it because, you know, they want to be able to buy and do what they want. And so money is important and they'll be driven to work harder through money. Whereas money doesn't really drive me. I wouldn't take a job purely for money, although, of course, we all like it. Um, recognition, I like. You know, if I've done a good job, I like to be told that I've done a good job. And equally, when I'm working with other people, it's important that I tell them it's that they're doing a good job or highlight what it is that they've done that is really good. And I think that way of communicating with people where you can um, say when someone's done a good job, not in this old school where you'd have your one yearly review that was acceptable, <laughs> is, um, you know, we like to be told when we're doing good and we equally like to be told when we're doing bad. Um, Humour, for me, is pretty important. I like a laugh. helps the day go by and it helps keep me light and creative and so if I'm in a workplace where you know there's not really people that I can gel with or have a laugh with it takes away some of the um, joy of the job and so it's important that I have a, an environment like that. Similarly these fall into the same place. Um, excitement is sometimes important. I don't need it all the time um, but it keeps me driven. Same with challenge. I don't need it all the time, but it helps to inspire me. Always important for me is people. I like to work with people, for people, to help people. Um, I'm not a numbers girl, I'm a people girl. And so that's what I value the most. Um, which is why probably things like financial gain and all that isn't so high up. But if I can work with people who inspire me and who I enjoy their company of, um, that's a higher value to me. Um, freedom for me is very important uh, and creativity. I think these go together sometimes. Um, I don't work nine to five. I don't come in and I'm inspired the minute I sit at my desk at nine. You know, inspiration can hit me at two in the morning and I'll work solid through to the morning. Or, um, you know, I'm on a train and I get an idea and I'll do it. I could be a Saturday or a Sunday. In fact, it's Sunday that I'm doing this now. Um, for me, I need a job that uh, will allow me to work when I can work or work when I'm inspired or work when there's an event that I can go and get some knowledge from, something like that, rather than a traditional kind of job, which was why I was self-employed for so long. I like to be my own boss, set my own hours, set my own challenges. Um, and my last few jobs have been in very entrepreneurial, envi entrepreneurial environments that um, understand that some people work in a different way to the traditional um, and let us do that and so for me in my work life people freedom a chance to be creative a chance to step outside the box and try new things um be a bit of a rebel sometimes i really enjoy that and i value that and that helps me choose what kind of work i'll do um which is why we look at values because it means that you'll all be working on projects they're your projects so in some essence you know they are you're the entrepreneur or the startup person behind it you're the driving first force of what it is that you're working on um, and as we mentioned before values can help steer your decisions so I know that if I'm working on a particular project and I'm not feeling excited I'm not feeling challenged um, there's a lot of stress within the group or you know I have somebody up in the chain who's taking my work and passing it off as there, that's going to make me feel unhappy or bored or stressed. And so I'll have to deal with the situation to figure something out, to change those things, to make sure that these good things, these values that drive me um, are a part of my working life. So it might be that I have to speak to somebody and change something, or it might be that I leave that place and try something new. 
Um, it also means that before I even start something, I'll have a look at whether that job role will tie in with this, you know, whether I'll have a chance to do these things. Because if it doesn't, if it was something, um, you know, that was perhaps status driven or financially driven and it had um, a bad work-life balance or it was me in a room with numbers and documents and I wasn't able to get out there and interact with people, that wouldn't be the kind of work that would inspire me and so it's something that I would say no to. So understanding your values is also really important, not just how you steer what you're doing but how you avoid things that you shouldn't be doing. Um, I think, like I mentioned before, you always know when you're going against your values because you'll get a gut feeling that something's wrong or you're not quite happy. Um, so what I want you to do is pause the video, take some time to, um, you'll have more room so you don't have to double them up like this, is to spread out your all your post-its under the headings and then write some more because you'll probably, as we're talking, have come up uh, with more that you've thought of. Um, and just as an example, because I haven't popped these up, um, working alone. When I first started my own businesses, I loved to work alone. I thought it was great. I thought that was what I wanted. I had all the power. But actually, having worked in lots of jobs since, I really like working with people. Like I've said here, they inspire me. And so, um, yes, I like to be autonomous and make my own decisions, but actually not working alone. So this is not important for me. Physical challenge. I'm a bit lazy. I don't need a job that will challenge me physically. I need a job that will challenge me mentally and creatively. And so um, these might be things that you've written down. Like, I love that. And this is really important to me. But in a work context, is it important? So, yeah, spread your things across always important, sometimes important, rarely important and never important. Part two of this is I want you to have a look at the Commonwealth values um, that we mentioned or are mentioning during this module and just have a look at if any of your values that you hold dear reflect the Commonwealth values and I'd like you to write down just a paragraph on each in a way that you actively demonstrate the Commonwealth values through your work. So it could be something really obvious you know if you're working in um, inclusivity or equality you know that's simple you've got a big tick there already so just kind of write that heading write that value heading and how you're practically demonstrating both in the work that you do but also in things that are printed or online about your business so how can we see that what you do is reflecting that commonwealth value in the thing the module descriptor was Clean Young Leaders is about bringing Commonwealth values to life. So how are you bringing those values to life? So stop the video and do that and then come back. So now that you have looked at your personal values and how they link to your project, and you've looked at how your project actively demonstrates the Commonwealth values, I want you to go and do some field work. Or that is, I want you to stop being alone doing this work and go and take it out to your stakeholders. So that is your partners in the project, your employees, and perhaps beneficiaries, so the people that benefit from the work that you do, as some examples. And I want you to do this values task with them, but slightly differently. Um, rather than looking at their own values, I want you to get them in the two minutes or three minutes, whatever it is you want to give them, time to think about the project and think about what values the project is showing. So what they understand about the project. It could be, um, you know, perhaps you are an LGBT campaigner or a um, women's rights campaigner or that's what your project's about. So probably the values would be something about respect and equality and meaningful work, um, perhaps about influencing others in terms of informing them or helping other people, helping society, um, being having integrity, 
could be things like love or caring. Um, so you can eat, you can give them a list, you can link them through to the list that I've given you or just let them come up with words. And then I'd like you to get them to present back the values they've seen and compare them with your own work values that you have found or the mission statement that you might have updated since you did the start of this task. Um, and are there any discrepancies, are there any areas where um, they've mentioned things that actually aren't in your mission statement that perhaps are important to them and they see as core to the work that you're doing but you haven't recognised it. So that's a really good thing to discuss or it could be that you have something in your mission um, that you've decided this is a core value of this project but no one's mentioned it or maybe only one or two out of the group have mentioned it and if it is so integral to your work why is it that it's not being perceived or understood and is that something you should change or is it that that value isn't actually suited to the work you're doing and perhaps it becomes a sometimes important rather than an always important. Um, so I'd really like you to um, just go and do that and then come back to us and reflect on it. Um, it'd be great if you can take pictures of you so we can see your groups that you were working with and you know the beautiful post-it explosions or your cut up paper. Um, so you can take a picture of some of the post-it walls that you've made with them or just reflect and say you know what everyone that I spoke to they recognize the values that are core to the project and are in the mission and are mine and everything's great we're all on the same page or you could come back and say do you know what I discovered that there are people that I work with that are valuing a completely different thing to me and that's fine because our end goal is the same but recognizing those different values and what's motivating different people on your team can be really useful when you're making decisions and trying to develop your work. Um, so I look forward to seeing what you're up to and just to recap, um, the end of this task you should have done your own personal values linked to your project under the headings of always important, sometimes important, rarely important and never important. And then I want you to have looked at your mission and seen whether your mission and these values are in sync with each other. You will have looked at the work that you're doing and which of the Commonwealth values that it's representing and how you are actively demonstrating or bringing those values to life. And thirdly, you have gone out into the field or to your work um, and run the values task with them. Um, so that you can see what your team thinks the values of the project are or your you know, customers or your community. Um, see that you're all on the, page, on the same page and if you're not on the same page, what have you learned from that task? Um, and you'll see below a descriptor of how you can show us what you've been up to and also any supplementary reading. Okay, have fun.